Hello everyone, my name is Scott Meek with Diesel Laptops and today we're going to go over video 3 of the Fleet and Triage Tool series. So once you've connected to your ECM, the first page that you're going to come to is going to be the Faults page. Here you will see all of your active and inactive faults. If you notice to the left, we have a red triangle with a red exclamation point and the letters ATT. This indicates to the operator that this is an active fault code, a code that is currently happening. If we scroll down to the bottom here, you'll notice that there's one other code color on this list. That's a yellow triangle with a yellow exclamation point and the letters MEM. That is an inactive fault. That is a fault that is not currently happening, but has happened previously. Another fault color that you will see is a green triangle with a green exclamation point. So once the operator has cleared the codes, it will be indicated to him by the description of the code coming back and a green triangle. By double clicking any fault code, you're going to get fault code information. The first set of information you're going to get is going to be the OEM fault code information. The second set is going to be the generic OBD information. If you highlight a code and want to know a little bit more about that code, you can click the help icon located on the bottom right hand of the screen. By clicking this icon, it's going to give you a description of the code with some additional information. Another feature is once highlighting a code, if the 123 asterisk is now highlighted in blue, then you now have access to freeze frame data. Freeze frame data is going to be a specific set of parameters that the OEM decided is important to monitor when a fault code comes active. This will be stored information from those parameters and their values at the time of the fault code occurrence. The error clearing icon here will allow you to clear all fault codes that are inactive currently on the screen. The next icon is the diagnosis record. This is going to save any information that's currently on the screen. For example, your fault codes on this particular screen. The next icon is the print icon. This is going to print whatever information is currently being displayed. The next tab that we'll come to is the ECU info tab. This tab is going to give you specific OEM information, such as ECM calibration, VIN number, customer name, engine hours, etc. You can print a copy of this by clicking the print icon here. The next tab is going to be the activations tab. This is where all of your component testing is going to be located. One feature that's nice to have is if you highlight a specific test and the test does not start for some reason or does not complete, if you click the help icon located on the bottom right hand side of the screen, it will give you some information about why that test did not start. For example, it gives you interlocks that tell you the coolant temperature must be greater than 150 degrees. It also gives you a description of the test and it gives you additional information about that specific test. The next tab is the settings tab. Now keep in mind the settings tab is not typically going to show unless you performed an activation from the main screen. Whatever activation you chose is going to be the activation that shows here. The next tab that we're going to go to is the live data tab. This tab is going to show you all your live parameter data. Notice that these are all in numerical value. If you would like to see graphical view, just double click the particular parameter you want to see and that will give you a graphical view of that specific parameter. If you would like to go back to numerical value, simply double click again. If you notice underneath each value is a green and a red number. That's the minimum and maximum. By clicking this icon, that will reset everything to zero and then go back to nominal. This is especially helpful for technicians trying to find wiring issues uh, for an example, if you have a wiring issue on a vehicle and it's a 5 volt reference, you can set the min max, go do the wiggle test, and once you return to the laptop, if the voltage has dropped below 5 volts, you know the area of where that could have been an issue. This is the filter icon. This icon is going to allow you to choose specific parameters that you want to monitor. You can do that in two different ways. You can manually select each parameter 
or you can use the text search description box. For example, we're going to type in EGR. That's going to give us all parameters with EGR in the description. From here, we can manually select those. Click the check icon here. And now we're only monitoring the parameters that we want to see. If we want to return to the original list, we can just click the delete filter icon here. Now we're back to the main page. This is the favorite parameters icon here. By clicking this icon, it's going to bring up a specific set of sessions that Texa thought would be helpful for technicians to diagnose vehicles. If you want to perform a recording of these specific set of parameters, you can click the record icon here. If you want to build your own session to save for future use, you can click the add icon here. From here we can manually select as many or as little parameters as we like, or we can use the search function again. If we type in EGR, it will bring up the parameters that have the keyword EGR, and we can manually select those. Click the check button, and then you can name the session. We'll name this one EGR Low Power. Click the check icon. Now we have a saved session for future use. If you no longer want to use the session, you can click the delete icon here. Or you can edit the session by clicking the edit icon. And you can add any parameters that you would like to view along with the list that you've already created. Now let's do a recording. You can set your record length from 1 minute to 30 minutes in 1 minute increments. Set the record length and hit the record icon. You are now recording a snapshot for review at a later time. When you are done recording, hit the stop recording icon and it has been saved. Now it didn't ask you for a file path, but I'll show you where to find that and how to save it. All you have to do is exit the self-diagnosis screen. From here, you will save the information by clicking Enter Customer, and then entering whatever information in to later locate the vehicle under the license plate number. It doesn't have to be the license plate number, just the information you'll use later to find that vehicle. So we will use ABC123 for an example and then put as much or as little information in these boxes as you like. Click Next. And then again, as much or as little information as you like in these boxes. And then select Save. So the recording you just made has now been saved for view. You can either view here or delete here. Now if you exit out and go over to the left side of the screen, you'll see the customer management icon. By clicking this icon, it's going to bring you to the page where you can locate the data logs that you just made. You can use the search box to find it. Once you found it, you can either view it or delete it from here. So that concludes our Fleet and Triage Tool Video 3. Thank you for joining us.